The following film is one of a series of three, commissioned by Forests Monitor and Troppenbos International, which explain what community forestry is and present the benefits and challenges it can bring. Case studies from eight countries show what might be possible in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Community forestry has been very successful around the world in helping improve the livelihoods of rural people while protecting forest resources. It's an example for other places in the world, not just Guatemala. The message is that, yes, it can happen. It takes huge effort, much patience. This process takes time. It can't happen from one day to the next, but when we do it well, it can happen. It's a very good example of what can be achieved. It has been wonderful to see many of the community forestry organizations we helped to form legally, develop enormously and grow stronger over the years. In this film, we will explore how community forests can be managed and structured and the challenges involved in developing these structures. For community forestry, I guess we can look at it at two levels. You've got the national level and therefore the, the legal framework, um, which allows community forestry to operate in, in whatever way. But then you also have the internal governments within the community. And both of these are really important. The first step in setting up a community forest is for the community members to consider how they will organise themselves to implement all forestry activities, how to take decisions and how to distribute the benefits. Most communities already have traditional methods for decision making. Sometimes these same structures are also used for community forestry. Where such structures do not exist or are inadequate, new ones may need to be created. After receiving information about community forestry in a meeting of the whole village, it was the village that then chose the Natural Resources Committee to protect, run and manage our forest. It was there and then that we chose a committee of 16 people, 8 men and 8 women. The development of new decision-making structures for community forestry can sometimes provide an opportunity for marginal groups to become more involved in forest management, such as women or particular ethnic groups. I feel proud now that all the other women and poor people know about the community forestry group and we look after the forest, planning what we do in the group. We feel part of the community and have the same opportunities as everyone else. The organizations which are established to run community forests play an important role in managing the costs and distributing the benefits. Profits from a community forest may be divided among its members or invested in communal infrastructure. If we get more money for the village from the community forest, there are a lot of things we would be able to do. First the road, also we could bring clean water, as there is no clean water here. You've seen how bad the road is when you were coming here. The health clinic too, and lots of other things. In the community of Carmelita in Guatemala, a different model is used. A cooperative company was formed in which residents can choose to become members. The financial profits, the dividends, are shared among the members, though the wider community also gains. The cooperative works in such a way that all the residents of the community can become members. The dividends are distributed solely among us, the members of cooperatives, according to the internal regulations. There are benefits, like university grants, 
that exist only for the members. There are also benefits, like support of the primary schools, that exist for all the community, whether they are members or not. Jobs are also offered for all members of the community. Some of the money from community forestry is needed to cover the costs of forest management and for reinvesting in order to expand or improve activities. Let's suppose that these three leaves signify the net profits. After all, expenses are deducted from the gross for the year. For the year, net. Well, 40% of the profit is reinvested to pay for next year. This leaves 60%. This part is shared between the members as dividends. Now what is left is for the social benefits. Education, health care, sports, religion. The process of establishing a decision-making structure for a community forest is not easy. Newly introduced decision-making structures often clash with existing institutions. For the time being, we understand that those in charge of this community forest, well, not everybody is benefiting, to be clear with you, they are the only ones benefiting. <laughs> to avoid resentment and conflict within the community, it is important that the process of developing a structure for community forestry is fair and open, and that traditional leaders and institutions are involved. At some points, there were strong clashes of interest between the members of the community due to things that got misunderstood. But we have learned our lesson and now we are clear about it, that the best way to deal with problems is to start a dialogue and to get all the information into the open, so as not to have same regrets. For community forestry to develop, governments have to show commitment and provide support. Just changing the laws is not enough. Forestry officials have to get used to a major change in their role, from direct involvement in managing forests to providing support and training. Well, the important turning point was that the government actually accepted this is something that they want to do um, and put in uh, a framework, legal framework, to enable it to happen um, and they're actually supporting it to happen. In some countries in Latin America, Governments have provided important support to community forestry, including technical advice and loans. Very often, however, governments have made it difficult for communities to succeed. Communities may be given only degraded forest lands, have to comply with costly regulations, and face very slow bureaucratic processes and corruption among forest officers. The problem is that now the community have put these plans in place for the forest, they have still yet to see the benefit. As a result, they are beginning to lose enthusiasm. They were motivated by the project and believed they would get to the stage where they would reap the benefit, but are frustrated that things are still not going to plan. The transportation of our timber from forest to industry offers many opportunities for illegal payments. I don't have a problem with paying legal fees, but the problem is that corrupt officials ask for money. In too many cases, the forests that are given to people are the poorest forests. So you give the poorest forest to the poorest people, uh, you can't expect miracles. Communities are asked to immediately produce their own management plan. It costs a lot of money, and that's one of the reasons for failure. 
Many community forests have received valuable support from non-governmental organizations. I would like the Mpingo Conservation Project to continue to help us more in the future, but I also think there is still much which we can do now to protect the forest ourselves. Support organizations can provide vital assistance and training during all the stages of development of a community forest. From establishing rights and committees, through surveying and mapping the forest, to harvesting, processing and selling forest products and services. Communities in Guatemala have come together to build their own support structures, which support existing community forests and help new ones to develop. In the first years, we were very dependent on the project of NGOs. Those organizations were very helpful, but our own organization have gradually developed so that they are depending less and less on external assistance. In other words, we try to achieve sustainability, or rather self-sustainability, of our own organizations in the process, in order to be able to move forward. In Bolivia, indigenous people with experience in forest management teach their skills to other communities, helping expand community forestry to new areas. This film has shown some of the challenges in developing community forests. It has also shown how over time these problems can be overcome. When they are, community forestry can transform the lives of rural people for the better. In Congo, the government is working with partners to help design and implement community forestry in the country. Pilot projects have already been set up in a number of places. For the government and our forest legislations, community forestry is a new reality which we are introducing to the forest management in the Congo. Our dream, in regard to the forest sector, is for the process of zoning of forests to be successful, so that forests are sustainably managed. And first and foremost, that the management of our forest revolves around the fight against poverty for our people, but also to help us participate in the fight against climate change by preserving our forest and developing alternatives for the survival of our populations. These are our dreams. Déjà, le législateur dans le code forestier a pris l'option de créer les forêts des communautés locales. The legislature have already introduced laws and codes with a lot of options for creating local community forests, and the government is presently working to put in place judicial and administrative regulations to make it a reality. soit réellement une réalité. Et pour ce faire, le gouvernement. The government has created a structure in the forest department to oversee the implementation of local community forests. There will be an office in each province, and this will be replicated on a local level in each territory and district to deal with community forestry. We are almost there, and I think in time we will be talking about the case of DRC. It could become a model for Central Africa. I have been on the ground, and the communities say, yes, we are ready, give us the law. We really want to be in charge of our forest, officially.